1728, John Bartram comes here and buys a 100-acre farm and begins collecting rare plants. That alone would be interesting, but uh, it's really the continuity, the fact that then his sons continue this uh, after the American Revolution, and then his granddaughter continues it after the War of 1812. So from 1728 to 1850, this is really the premier American botanic collection. They send plants to Europe for the most part. Most of their customers are really Europeans but they also bring in new plants from all around the world as well. So this is really like an outpost for the exchange of plants and scientific information. The Bartrams were naturalists in a broad sense, so they were, they're, we consider them botanists now, but they're interested in geology and they're interested in anthropology and archaeology. They're interested in birds and mammals and reptiles and fish and shells and all that, fossils even. So. They had a really wide range of interests because science, natural science hadn't really been split up. In fact, they usually call it natural philosophy, which to us sounds like a funny term and doesn't mean much. John Bartram sometimes talks about doing philosophic pursuits and you know the search for knowledge, but I think he also realizes that there is a business component. And they also very clearly realize that there's no one around them to support them in doing this. They realize, John Bartram particularly writes very clearly that no one else in Philadelphia thought like he did, that he felt like an outsider, that there were very few people that were interested in what he was interested in. You know, John Bartram says something like, people are much more interested in going to taverns and bars, and you know, they're not interested in doing anything practical. The small number that were kind of gathered together. So Benjamin Franklin was a good friend of John Bartram's. Franklin is interested in a different kind of science. I mean, he gets into electricity and physics, but he had the same kind of scientific ideals. Those kinds of people who knew about something kind of gathered together. And they, you know, this was a gathering place where people like Franklin or, you know, would come to talk to John Bartram about his interests. In the 20th and 21st century, everyone thinks that you know, people have these very narrow little roles, but in the 18th century, that just didn't exist. And to some extent, you know, people like Franklin and Bartram they could expand to fill a void. He could be a geologist, he could be a religious thinker, he could be a medical practitioner, he could be a cagey businessman, he could be a scholar, he could collect books, he could do all of that and get away with it and be living here in, you know, on the fringes of a semi-urban place. Um, so he was lucky, yeah.